Hey everyone, my name is Marissa. Welcome to the Pick a Card readings today. This is all about your natural gifts and talents and how to use them within this incarnation. Just remember these are general readings, all right? Uh, soul blueprint type style readings. So this, if anything, these should always be confirming to you. What you already know to be true about yourself, tarot should never really be telling you anything really new, okay? So use your intuition, honor your intuition above anything else. And yeah, you guys have four piles to choose from today. You have the medicine mother right here. You have the wise one, lady, and white witch. So that's also group one, two, three, and four. Take your time. Otherwise, we're gonna hop right into these sessions. Hello, group number one. Welcome to your reading. If you chose Medicine Mother as your card today, your pile, this is your reading for your natural gifts and talents and how to use them within this incarnation. So right away, I mean, the codes within this pile, pile number one, okay? Like, this is incredible. I honestly don't even know to, where to begin because, I mean, the fact that you have all major arcana came up at the bottom, you know, I shuffle my cards extremely well. Like, I'm just getting the sense that you guys are extremely old souls with Medicine Mother and Star Ancestors. This really does talk about having a deep and ancient wisdom available to you that... I mean, kind of seemed like I bet it has been there throughout your entire incarnation. This is something that people have probably recognized in you. And honestly, you guys have extremely powerful codes that you come in working with. Uh, you know, the dolphin energy is all about, you know, they're highly intelligent and they're also natural healers, okay? Being immersed in the water element. So I wouldn't be surprised if whatever it is that you're guided to do, um, in this incarnation is, is has something to do with uh, creativity, but also it's very healing, okay? The work that you're here to do is very healing and very beneficial to other people in some way. I feel like because naturally your expression is so much so about breaking through, like breaking through stagnant versions of yourself. I mean, the, the panther energy is all about annihilation, okay? It's all about stepping beyond your own constraints and your own self-perceived limitation and like not letting yourself get really stagnant, right? Because I feel like you've seen that when you're not utilizing your magic, when you're not utilizing your creative capacity in a positive way, I really feel like you can become self-destructive. Um, pile number one, that's just really what I'm kind of getting just because it's like with the amount of power you come in with, um, with the amount of power you come in with when it's not being, when you don't feel like it's not being aligned to something greater than yourself, then yeah, I feel like you just might slip into, or maybe in your past, this might have been more of like a noticeable energy. Um, but as you have grown wiser, I feel like you've learned to utilize that energy in your favor. I'm getting the sense too that like, when it comes to your shadow, I, I feel like a deep acceptance of where you're at and where you've been. And I, I honestly, that is one of the biggest gifts that you can offer to anyone on this planet. Okay. Like this true acceptance of your silliness and just your goofiness and what makes you who you are. I feel like because of the experiences you might have had when you were younger, or even just like, you might just have some, a lot of like, um, Pluto, Plutonian energy in your chart, or just like, um, you know, Scorpio in your chart, but there is something here that about um, kind of being forced into the underworld. And because so, it's like you've come out like a warrior and you've come out extremely wise and someone like the older you become, I feel like the more comfortable you just become in yourself and you're, you're a very balanced individual. Okay. The thing, what I recently learned watching like a documentary with my daughter about dolphins is dolphins, like they are one of the few, I feel like it's just them. Like one thing that they share with humans that not any other, I'm pretty sure it's no other mammal shares this, but dolphins will like play. Like there was this documentary where they will take, what is it? I think some of it was like trash. Okay. It was pretty disgusting. You know, the plastic that ends up in the ocean, but seaweed, they would, they like toss seaweed around. They play catch with seaweed in the water. And that's like a trait that you know, like playing catch is more of like a human thing. Okay. So 
All this to say that dolphins just make the most out of life, okay? They make the most out of what they've been through, what they're going through. Um, they're extremely they're extremely magical creatures, okay? And because we have star coming through here and the dolphins tend to also be linked with the stars and like, you know, um, out of this world entities, that might be something that resonates with you too. Like just feeling so out of this world, I feel like you leave a wake of impact no matter what, where you go. I feel like your gifts and talents aren't just one thing. I think just your existence, <laughs> pile number one, honestly, is just so inspiring for the people that you meet. I'm just getting the sense of uh, very balanced with the feminine energy and the, the water element, but also you have like your masculine energy, whether you're, you are male or not, is very on point, okay? I feel like you go after what it is you want with Unlock the Magic Within coming up right above the chariot card, like you like nothing can stand in your way when pile number one decides they want something nothing stands in your way and i feel like it's not to say that you probably don't have insecurities or things but everything put in its proper context i feel like like the death of pile number one would be not living up to their full potential all right that's like your biggest nightmare i feel is knowing that you have so much to offer and feeling like you didn't even scratch the surface of that and so i feel like you guys are extremely motivated and you're very intentional with the way that you live your life. I feel like when you come into people's lives, like you are a blessing and a lesson, okay? Like it's not either or, you are a blessing and a lesson for these individuals. And um, I just feel like you constantly upgrade, right? That's one of your gifts. You're consistently becoming a better version of yourself. You're consistently um, shedding old layers. I feel like I feel like one of your telltale signs if of when you're coming out of balance because this is aligned here in this way is when you're trying to micromanage things and when you've kind of lost that zest for life like for pal number one one of your gifts is not taking it too seriously but still it's like you take it serious enough to where like i don't know you guys you guys are so masterful okay you guys are very mastered like very spiritual beings like with the hermit card especially and the moon card coming up very spiritual beings very self-aware very introspective you guys would be the ones to know about the subconscious and the unconscious and like how to deprogram that and just like very intentional and i feel like one of your way your key ways of knowing when you come out of balance is when you've kind of lost the zest for life and when it feels like you're kind of just floating around um, and again, it's one of those, you know, balances, right? Balance of knowing when to play and knowing when to get serious too. But I feel like for you, it's like in all of the shadow work that you do, there is an element of fun and like not taking it so seriously, but taking it serious enough. Like you guys are so, there's so much cosmic energy coming through. I, I really feel like you guys are cosmic explorers. I feel like you've had many, many thousands, hundreds, if not, if not hundreds of thousands, like you guys have had many, many, many lifetimes. Okay. And that might not be something that you believe in, right? But that's all All to say is that you seem like you have a very weathered soul about you. Like you have your priorities straight. Um, and I feel like just whatever it is you do, your goal is to leave the world a better place than you found it. I feel like you have access, greater access to um, ancient wisdom than you probably even give yourself credit for. There's a lot here about um, being self-sourced in terms of your wisdom. And it's not to say that we don't, rely on the teachings of other people now and then but with you pal number one part of your gift and part of your talent is you're bringing through ancient wisdom in a way that is very unique okay so um like self-expression um might be a part of this we're, we're gonna get deeper with the tarot here okay but i just feel like with this group it's like anything that you do is part of you giving your gifts. Like I really don't see this just being involved in one field or one area in particular. You guys might be teachers in some way just because of this, like all of these, these three archetypes to me represent being a teacher. So you guys might be writers too. You might write books, you might do poetry, but there's something about what you do that like really honors the human experience, no matter how spiritual you might be like, this would be a group that is very wise to know that, you know, you don't become more divine by denying your humanity. And so I feel like whatever it is like that you're meant to do in this life, if you're not, you're probably already doing it. Okay. This, Cause you guys are very motivated and very self sourced. And I am getting a lot of like cardinal energy from this. So like self starters, like you guys go after things. Um, so what is that? What is that energy? Hold on, pal number one, just because I don't want to take forever to think of it. I just wrote this down the other day. So yeah, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn um, could be significant placements. 
for you guys, like in your sun and or moon. Uh, but overall, I just am getting the sense that you guys like start things and you see them through. Uh, there is some mutable energy coming through as well here too with the panther. So like when things start don't really work or when it's like you have extracted whatever lesson it is that you were meant to extract from something, like whatever it was meant to unlock within you and teach you and reveal to you about yourself, like you don't linger in things too long. Like the, the chariot card and the panther energy are giving me like strong, like, all right, when it's time to go, I'm not sticking around kind of energy, okay? So yeah, this is very beautiful so far. I feel like you guys too might be into like ancient healings, maybe even study Ayurveda or something like that. That might be something you guys are guided to as well, like more natural um, forms of like healing modalities and just like understanding your thoughts and understanding how sickness is born and what where illness stems from, I feel like would be very different from mainstream media. Uh, you know, that takes it as just purely a physical thing. And I feel like you guys would understand that uh, it's more of, uh, it's, it's, you know, everything is born of the subtle. Okay. And if something's not right with your energy, then it's going to manifest externally, um, physically in a specific way. So that, you know, I might even have some like naturopaths or, um, people that are just interested in herbology and Ayurveda, but whatever it is, I feel like you guys are having fun when you're doing it, doing it. And it is most certainly has to do with healing. Okay. Um, helping people come into greater alignment with themselves and understanding the spiritual nature, the philosophical nature behind reality and to own and embody all parts of themselves and not thinking that it's, you know, not thinking there's anything wrong with them if because they have a shadow, you know, different levels, different devils, my friends, okay? It's never ending as long as we're on this plane of polarity. And I know you guys know that. And I feel like that'd be something that you're communicating somehow, even if it's not in such a direct way that like I'm doing it right now. Um, I feel like whatever you do communicates that holistic sense, right? Um, that yin and the yang element. So let's see how, um, how would this show up or how could this look for you, pal number one? Let's get a little bit deeper in how to use your gifts and talents naturally if you're not already doing it. Perseverance, so whatever it is that you're doing, um, you're seeing it all the way through. I feel like this is something that, yeah, it encompasses all areas of your life here with the lover's card. I feel like it's not something um, that you can really, like what you're guided to do, this is why I'm like, this is not just like one area. I feel like you live and breathe this like your gifts and talents are like you're living and breathing them all the time. I, I feel like you touch the hearts of many people wherever you go. I think people fall in love with you, honestly, because you have such this cosmic embrace about you. Um, I feel like you guys probably don't even like you have no idea how much of an impact you're already making on people. I mean, we just all made your arcana here so far, okay? you have no idea the impact you make on people. And I feel like a lot of people feel very lucky being in your presence. And that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of people tend to fall in love with you or they can get really attached to you maybe is because you are a natural healer, just being in your field. Y'all don't even have to be doing anything important, okay? Or just like special or like, you know, you don't have to have them laid out on like a Reiki table for them to feel like they're um, being healed. Just like having a conversation with you. Uh, it's so obvious just like how strong there's such a feel a, a powerful feline presence here all right and that's like the you know the feline um the feline archetype is known to be like the protectors of the spirit world okay and that's what i get from the divine feminine as well so you guys are working with a lot of power and i'm not surprised that you would have the magic guardian come up as well like you guys are epic manifestors but i feel like it has to whatever you're doing it has to be in alignment with your integrity like you're not gonna like rip people off or you know you guys wouldn't be the pile if you're like you know take just for example like paid promotions right it's like unless you wouldn't do something and sell something to an audience or to people like if you didn't really believe in it like that's y'all you guys are not about that life okay like it's like whatever you put yourself behind or your energy behind is like, that's you putting your name behind something and you don't put your name behind something, pal number one, unless it really aligns with you. And unless you, you know, unless it really can have the potential to make a positive impact in the lives of others. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're always offering a service or a product. It's like, even just you, again, having fun, um, being joyful, not taking it so seriously, taking it serious enough, but like going out, play, like play is so important for you guys right? Like if you're not, if you don't have those moments, that might, that, that, that's when you come out of balance. But I feel like, uh, you know, whenever you're doing something that's uplifting for you and you're in that very beautiful flow state, like you just attract people, man. 
Like people are so like, man, you have so many gifts, like just your, your expression. And I, and this is like for everyone. Okay. But it's just, maybe you guys just really don't see how incredible you are. And so, yeah, you guys just might really be hard on yourselves because you have such powerful codes and earth is such a limited planet, you know, and it's like, we can only unlock a certain degree of our own, um, codes and our own soul stream because it's very relative. It's very influenced by the state of the consciousness on the entire planet. So I feel like if anything, you guys are, might get frustrated because you're like, I should be farther along than I am. But, um, yeah, I feel like if anything, this could be <laughs> really be your guys coming through and saying like, you guys are doing so good. Okay. And like impacting a lot of people already with whatever you're doing. And I feel like, um, what, how you're supposed to use this, it's going to be creative. It's going to be different. Um, is really what I'm feeling or some, there's something unique about it. And there's something that is ancient about it as well. So, you know, sometimes we can say, Oh, like new age spirituality is like your thoughts create things like that's, you know, Ayurveda is pretty old. That's been practiced for like over 5,000 years, you know? And so there's a lot in Ayurveda, like it's there, there's a reason why the yogis used Ayurveda. Okay. Because yoga, yogic philosophy is all about clearing obstructions between your limited self and your higher divine mind. So you're experiencing greater bliss, greater peace, greater contentment. You're enjoying your life more. All right. Modern medicine and like, you know, that's been around for what, like 200 years. So, I mean, if you ask me, that's new age, like this is ancient stuff. Okay. So I feel like you guys would be bringing like ancient types of wisdoms into whatever it is that you're doing in your own unique way. And there's nothing stopping you. Like when you guys really align with something and you're like, this is what I'm doing. Like, this is what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> okay. And like, no one can really get in the way of that because like, it's guided by something much greater than you. Like the forces of the universe and the cosmos are aligned when you, pile number one puts their heart and soul to something. Look at that. I knew there was a reason I was like lingering with that. So yeah, we even have, again, justice coming up at the bottom of, of the deck to solidify that energy. But honestly, pile, that's going to bother me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it by my OCD. Okay, how can I fit this in? Um, so the world is yours, okay? Like, I feel like this might also have to do with just your impact might be a global thing, um, you know, just with the age of Aquarius, uh, that we're in, we really have the opportunity to connect with so many people around the world that we didn't have before, even like a hundred, like 50 years ago. Okay. I just remember AOL dial up when I was like in uh, middle school. Okay. Chatting to some boys that, you know, <laughs> shouldn't have been chatting with <laughs> JK. Um, but yeah, I feel like you just, I don't think you, you're a globe trotter. Okay. I don't think you even realize how much of an impact you make. I feel like just your natural expression, your lightheartedness, uh, there's so much old wisdom here that tells me one of the reasons why this is a natural gift and talent for you is because, you know, I feel like we, we can kind of see this in a microcosm when we go through our own spiritual journey, where it's like, we take everything so seriously and we're like, not going to be around that person, low vibe, this low vibe, that and like, not going to eat this, not going to like, which is beautiful. You know, I just love when people are so like devoted to becoming their better selves. So that's not me knocking anyone's path or journey or anything, but there also gets to a point to where I feel it's like, okay, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm no longer pushing away any part of this experience because there's like a deep wisdom in you that knows that it's all here to teach you something. Right. And so, um, that's part of the shadow is trying to deny any part of the experience. And so whatever it is that you do, I feel like you just bring the fullness of who you are to it. Uh, you are a natural teacher. You are a natural guide. I wouldn't, again, I think that came up in the beginning, but whatever it is that how you're, you are to use these gifts, I am really seeing that you guys could even have changed your career many different times. Okay. Like you don't stick in something long, whether that be friendships, uh, whether that's romantic partners or whatever, it's all about karma. And it's all about, uh, what is going, what is serving the most amount of people. Okay. Like understanding that when you become stagnant in anything that that is not serving for you, that's not stagnant for, or that's not serving for anyone involved. And so I feel like it's very important for you to constantly be up leveling and upgrading. So you guys could be life coaches. You guys could be uh, tarot readers. You guys could be um, people that just are creatives in general. There's so many different ways that, uh, 
you know, our creativeness can come out, but in, in a big, big way, I feel like you would be a person that people are like, there is something very unique about this individual and they are very powerful. And that's clear when you walk into a room. I mean, with all of this, these all major arcana, it, it like, man, to be in a room with you and when you meet someone new, I feel like they are like, blessing. <laughs> and sometimes it's a lesson, okay? Sometimes it's a painful lesson, but you are a blessing because I feel like ultimately, regardless of, you know, all of these very surface level or like, maybe not surface level, but regardless of just like relationships, right? And just like when we're just solely focused on the 3D plane, like I feel like that's when we can tend to, things can get messy, but you guys have such a zoomed out perspective of the human experience that you're relating to people's souls. And that's why it's so healing to be in your presence because subconsciously and subliminally, you give people permission to become a, a version of themselves that might be rare for them because they're so busy telling this old story or believing this old story or being around people that are reinforcing this old story of themselves. And so because you're such an, a soul identified individual, when you come into the fields of other people, you will, you see the soul and you see beyond their role, you see beyond the earthly experience, you honor that. And again, like there's, this is very like, this is very an extremely tapped in and tuned in and subtle group, okay? And that's where the real healing happens is on that subtle layer. And you guys are very in tune with the subtle energies. And yeah, I mean, this could look like so many different things. Reiki, um, I know I said tarot. This could even be like, even if you're a teacher in school to like kids, like, you know, we need teachers like with these codes, okay? But I'm seeing really this is a group that is very eclectic. There's going to be a lot of different people doing a lot of different things at this time. But I feel like what's really important is that um, as much as you can, you're in environments that are supporting that creativity. And you're around other people that are dreamers. You're around other people that are actually achieving it as well. And again, it's like not necessarily because it's like a status thing, but I feel like it would be important for you because I feel like if you... Because you can, you could have the tendency of absorbing the codes from other people. Okay. And so I feel like for you, it's really inspiring when, and fun and awesome when you get around other people where they're li wa walking, breathing testimonies, just like you are of what's possible when you're aligning with your creative force and you're aligning with other people. Like that's where the magic is really going to happen is when you find more of your soul family in whatever way, and you're working with them on a team or something, you're working with other creatives or at the very least, you're able to be your full self, okay? You're not filtering out any part of who you are. And again, sometimes that's a protection mechanism that like, you know, kind of with all of this karmic kind of completion that is being shown in your codes, that's something that organically happens more and more over time. We just get more comfortable in being our most unbridled, unfiltered self. Um, you know, but it's very, it's very important that Pile number one is not finding themselves in environments where they are ashamed of any part of who they came here to be because you can, like you probably don't fit in and you probably never fit, felt like you fit in anywhere because you're not meant to, all right? You're meant to change a lot of codes on this planet on a global level, all right? And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are travel, traveling the world, globe trotters. A lot of people know about you. A lot of people want to be your friend, like not even like, a, oh, like I'm so popular, but just like, no, this because you're the real fucking deal. You're just a real person and you see people again, you just like be on the roll into their heart and soul. And um, yeah, nothing's stopping you. <laughs> like, I don't know what y'all will be doing already, but you know, if there might be a few of you who aren't doing something already, but might have ideas. And I just want to say like, I am seeing very clearly that if you have that divine spark and that divine inspiration to do something, you should probably do it because I think you'll be very surprised at the amount of success that you end up having and the, and the amount of impact that is actually tangible that you can see that people tell you about. Okay. Because like this, like nothing is stopping you. All right. This is so powerful. Um, and I could go on. I just want to soak in this energy because you know, pile one has this energy and this is what other people want to do. They just want to be around you. I feel like people, you know, when you have lovers or people that are interested in you or people that meet you, I feel like they might just like you know, if you're at a party setting, I'm seeing someone like at a party setting and like meeting someone, talking to them. And then like, they just like kind of follow you around <laughs> like a little puppy dog or something because yeah, I mean, people want to be around you and I, I don't blame them. You're very powerful, very wise, very beautiful being. And thank you so much for being a part of my channel and gracing me with 
uh, this own this beautiful reflection and, and reminder of what the journey is about because uh, you guys got it down okay so pal number one i'm gonna leave this here for now if this resonated please give this video a thumbs up comment anything down below that you want to um letting us know that this is what you chose if you want to or any anecdotes or whatever and yeah i hope to see you guys on my channel again soon Hey, group number two, welcome to your reading. If you chose this wise one pile, this is your reading today for your natural gifts and talents and how to use them within this incarnation. All right, group number two. So very obvious that there's a lot here about emotionality with all of this green energy. Um, there's a lot here about... So just con contextually speaking, it became very clear to me uh, with a lot of these images that you guys might have come from a past that was a little bit unstable, um, chaotic, feeling maybe even unsafe at times, ungrounded, like where your basic needs might have been like compromised or like iffy, at least at moments, that enough to leave a deep impression on you of like feeling like you had a safe place. Um, this could be emotionally speaking too, physically as well, but I feel like, you know, with the rabbit energy and emotional loss and emotional withdrawal, and even the oyster can talk about withdrawing ourselves and not sharing what it is that we have to offer, even though there's like a pearl, there's so much wisdom that is in this pile. But I feel like for you guys, like you have just learned to pr protect yourself. Okay. And to not trust a lot of people, which is like honor your journey. I'm never... I am not one to criticize anyone's path, okay? Because if y'all have were able to watch my life in a movie, you would be like, okay, <laughs> Marissa cannot talk, okay? So that's not what I'm coming from. I'm never coming from a place of like, I know better than anyone, but I am just seeing that you guys have a lot that you could share. And I'm um, just being someone that can also relate to this energy. I am seeing again that there could be like a sort of skittishness that you might have experienced throughout your incarnation as you have healed, a work to heal your heart chakra. You know, and the thing, this, the beauty, the beauty here is that you don't become the hermit and the wise one without like really having a deep trigger, usually, unless you really have just been coming fresh off the incarnation list of like being a sage or a yogi. But I don't know. Like, I just see that you guys have had catalysts to go into your cave, the heart, right? Um, through trauma, um, PTSD. Uh, feeling unsafe, maybe even bullied, or just like having feeling like the family life wasn't there, because uh, there is thing is there is something here about sisters and brothers. Um, so there might have been some like just like upbringing stuff that aided to you feeling like you couldn't, you didn't really have a safe space to be yourself and to authentically express yourself. Okay, and so that emotional withdrawal, what started off as like an ache, I feel like has been your greatest catalyst, like that darkness, right? Because the hermit is in a cave, all right? And we have the Sri Yantra symbol behind here about the um, harmonizing the masculine and the feminine energy. So that's like the yin and the yang, that's the good and the bad, right? So uh, the cave represents the heart in um, esoteric teachings. And so there is that was the first thing I noticed when I flipped over your cards is, okay, there's a lot of heart healing that is happening here. And I feel like there's a lot that you've learned through your darkness that is part of your gift that you have to share. Um, and, you know, it seems like we might be at a point as a collective with how many people are waking up to just like childhood, what happened in their childhood, how that created them to be who they are. And just like having, you know, as this generation has kids, like just the degree of mindfulness that is now behind it. I mean, it kind of just does really show that there are many lessons in those lessons okay and i feel like your greatest gift is learning how to take that darkness and that turmoil and to create a life that a life of your dreams right because i feel like the when you have someone with these types of codes it's like as you inevitably step into your power because you know the wise one represents um the archetype of like she's the most fierce goddess archetype that there is um one of them if if not one of the the most right because she has lived through her wisdom she has seen it she's utilized her intuition um she sees what happens when she does she sees what happens when she doesn't and you know the crow really represents a continual rebirth uh, from darkness right death and then rebirth again and again and so i feel like all of this to say one of your greatest gifts is like it 
your success will not come at a compromise for other people. Um, and there's like, not a, you know, no exploitation or like free when you, as you become more successful, whatever way that means for you, it's like everyone ar around you feels like they are winning as well. And I feel like you guys are able to empathize with people to a degree that might even come at a detriment to yourself sometimes, just because I feel like you can so deeply relate to the greatest suffering and, and that human humans can experience that maybe sometimes like people can just dump on you. Okay. I'm not getting Amber heard here, but I mean like people can just like emotionally dump on you is what I mean by that. Okay. Um, yeah, keep that to the bathroom, okay? No dumping on beds out here. But I feel like you have been in situations um, that you've had no choice but to grow within them. So again, there's a lot here about feeling like you're in these dynamics and you have no, like, you're kind of forced to be in it. And maybe at some point you thought that was a curse. And so I feel like one of your greatest gifts is you know, this is not foreign to humanity. It's like really crazy how much I, I meet a lot of people in the fields that I'm in and what I do. And like, I'm at social events and stuff. And so like the more that I get to know people, I'm like, oh my God, like we really are all 50 shades of fucked up. Like not even in a way of like, we're out here being a victim, but there's something very freeing when you come to recognize that. And I feel like you are a being that has maybe come to recognize that or that in some way it's like you have learned to not be so like down on yourself or to wonder what was wrong with you or to wonder if you did something wrong. And there's just so much growth on so many, like, like psychologically speaking and spiritually speaking, there's a lot of growth here that I feel like was catalyzed by some things that happened that left you feeling very unsafe at some points. And like, you didn't have a lot of support because with this, um, root chakra. So part of what you're here to help other people with your natural gift and talent is like, how do you change the system? The best way to do that is from the inside out is because you get it. You understand it. You've been there. And so I feel like maybe in some way you guys do work where you are actively talking about trauma or mental health or, um, you know, these types of experiences, or like maybe you even write poetry or something, uh, but there's a lot here that says part of your gift is helping other people who have been through this recognize that they are safe, recognizing that they can still trust the universe. And, um, oh yeah, something else that's really important here is expression. Okay. Because we have withdrawal here, withdrawal here, and then we have expression here. So it's really important that you guys are, um, expressing yourselves. Okay. Because I feel like there, you know, there's a, he's like almost holding his hands over his heart, almost like protecting himself. And again, obviously like honor your intuition. Cause you guys are tuned in. Like I would never be like, I don't know, tell you to bypass when your heart is saying, this is not ears that what I have to share will not fall well on these ears and to share it anyways. It's not what I'm saying, but it's like in those moments where you actually feel deeply called to say something. And then maybe you clam up because of these like other experiences you've had where it didn't go so well or your truth wasn't welcomed or wasn't openly accepted or whatever, you know? And so, and yeah, this, this, even this treasure chest gives me a similar energy of this, of like what you have to share from the amount of pain and suffering you've been through and the wisdom you've gained through it is like, it can, it can change people's worlds. Like I just heard, I think his name is Kevin Gates, like a, a lover uh, kind of turned me on to him recently. And he's so wise. I'm like, he is definitely an old soul and he's definitely reaching a demographic that, you know, um, I feel like a, a certain demographic that really needs these types of teachings because he seems pretty spiritual as well. Um, but you know, he was talking about how he used to give away money, you know, that was his form of helping people. But he's like, but nowadays he's like, what I like to do is I like to help. I like to give people things that will help shift their pers perspective because he's like, that's going to be, be the only thing that creates a real type of change in someone's life. And so I feel like there's a certain demographic that you are here to work with that maybe not a lot of other people have access to or that they can't touch in the same degree that you can. Um, you know, it's like if you are someone that struggled with addiction, you know, you're going to want to work with someone who's been through addiction and has shown that they can not only overcome it, but they can have a very prosperous life regardless of what they've been through. That kind of thing. You know, it's like, I am getting the sense that you have, you can reach and touch a certain demographic that other people can't. 
And if you're guided to go into those areas, then you most certainly should because I'm getting goosebumps all over my body right now. And I feel like you really are here to help people with those, you know, um, I, I am even hearing something about like uh, losing people that you love to like suicide. You know, there's a lot here about mental health and like, you know, that type of thing too. And there's going to be different people drawn to this thing, but it's like, there's something that you can really relate to and you are inspiring other people, um, you know, based off of that. And despite what you went through and how messed up things might have seemed and to, to where you are and your emotional stability now, and even maybe financial. And, you know, I feel like you guys have come such a long way and you're here to inspire those, you know, those people that had similar upbringings that maybe have been forgotten about or that, you know, tend to get overlooked or something. But yeah, you were here to share those pearls of wisdom to help people change their perspective and to not be so identified with the story, to honor the story. It's that delicate balance. And, but you help them through expressing, through just like sharing your heart and not clamming up or, you know, understanding you're at a different point. And that was here. That was part of your soul's blueprint. It was here to lay a certain foundation for you, uh, in order to catalyze you into this very powerful direction. Um, you know, something that I have heard and that I deeply believe um, uh, maybe that I heard it from my guides. I don't know, but you know, they say the oldest souls take on the most karma, but this is not personal karma, right? It's like collective karma. Uh, you know, there, where there's little, there's little, really little left learning to do. We're always going to learn when we take a human birth, that's for sure. But it's like, there's little learning of the soul, like in terms of personally what your soul wanted to learn. And it's more of like, okay, I'm taking an incarnation where like, I am going to take on a lot in order to affect the collective in this type of way, because there's a lot of darkness around this specific area. And, and what is darkness? It's just confusion. It's something that the light hasn't really touched. And so you're here to shine light. And you know, that's what the hermit card in traditional tarot is known for. It's like to shine, to be the light in the darkest places. And so I feel like you have known the darkest places and you are to be a light in those places. Okay. So we're going to go get a little bit deeper in terms of what this could look like how you, you can utilize your gifts and talents, pile number one, or I'm sorry, pile number two, if you're not already doing it. Okay, yeah, so communities, there's a lot here about communities, healing, yeah, showing people that it's possible, starting where you are, not thinking that, you know, not waiting to be perfect for anything, right? Not waiting to be perfect, um, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> But there's a lot here about healing, being a healer in general. So there could be like a melding of different things that you do. Um, like what I mean by that, we have more of that water energy coming through. But yeah, I'm seeing so much water here. Excuse me, emotional healing. So you could be like um, someone that is into uh, Reiki, but you also combine like psychology or someone that, you know, like breath work can be seen as a very spiritual thing. But when you understand uh, you know, the nervous system too, when you're complementing like, you know, your spiritual understanding of breath work and, you know, the DMT that can be released or, you know, that it's designed to release and like regressions that can happen. Uh, but also understanding like the science behind it of like, okay, deep breathing calms the nervous system. So if you've been through a lot of trauma, you recognize nervous system healing is a really big part of that. Right. So that's what I mean. I feel like you're blending things. So it's like very practical. We did have that come through of like, the masculine with the feminine, so the like the right brain with the left brain, the analytical with the intuitive, I feel like is what you're here to do. Um, but you're honestly, you're here to work with people and I feel like you make a big impact one-on-one -on -one or in group settings. So you might be um, guided to teach people in group settings or I'm seeing something here about counseling, like even like couples counseling or marriage counseling or like family counseling, um, but like life coach too could be a thing. Um, but I feel like you help people restore their innocence that they might have felt like was taken away from them or, you know, that, um, you know, an innocence that was robbed from them, like, because they had to grow up so quickly, like you probably also had to do. And, um, yeah, there's a lot here about honoring the journey and honoring the time it takes, not, not letting anything that has happened, give anyone a permission slip or an excuse to not try their best. But I, I feel like too, there's a lot of inspiration of like, or, but let, let, like, let's get moving. Like, let's, let, let's work through this. Let's see what we can do. Let's work. Let's start with where we are. Um, but yeah, you guys are working in, um, or what you, you know, your gifts and talents can be applied in, in just a way of like, you guys are great listeners and people really feel seen by you. There's something behind your eyes. Like, look at her gaze is so compassionate, right? It's just like, 
if you're, when you talk to someone and they look like this, you know, you're being heard, right. Versus, you know, people that their eyes are always wandering around and like they're checking their phone or whatever. I feel like you guys give your full attention and awareness to people when you're in their presence. And so that might be why you're such a great, you know, um, counselor or whatever. And it's like, you know, I've had jobs too before where I wasn't like traditionally in a counselor setting, but I, I became like a therapist on wheels when I was Ubering, or I became like a mini counselor, or just like someone, like a friend, a good friend. It's not even like I'm giving people advice, but it's like, I'm just listening with my heart and just like not judging you, you know, like when I was making coffee, I've been a barista many times, you know, but like, it's not necessarily about what you're doing, but the place you're coming from. But I really am seeing for you guys, just in terms of tangibility, it is something um, creative. It is something uh, that I feel like you're working with people one-on-one -on -one is really where you're, you know, um, yeah, these, I'm seeing more about the community here as well. And where you are sharing the depths of your heart, it's this incarnation for you is really about opening yourself, opening and sharing the pearls of wisdom that come from your heart and inspiring a lot of people and showing them that it is possible. Um, but yeah, there's a lot here that says too about, just being very resourceful and starting where you are and in, in whatever capacity that that makes sense for you. And yeah, there's, there is not waiting to be perfect is something that also comes through quite a bit. So I feel like if anything, you could, you might have remnant things in your code or in your field that might be like, is it really safe to express myself? And it's really learning how to trust yourself of like, okay, am I feeling like I shouldn't say this because I know it's going to land on someone that is not ready to hear it. And I don't want to like break the law of free will or whatever, or is it like, um, I'm just experiencing that skittish energy because I was bullied or because my parents never really saw me or my family never really appreciated me for who I was, you know, that kind of thing. And I feel like, I feel like that's something that's a journey that you guys could probably tell me more about because I feel like you guys are very well versed in that. And you guys would probably be a group too, that I feel like is very into like knowing what your, you know, what is it like the INFJ thing, you know, that kind of thing, like knowing psych, psychologically what your personality types are and like just your you know how what your attachment styles are like those psychology based things and also knowing like your astrology chart and like you know the things that are you know what is it human design that kind of thing so i feel like you guys are a very beautiful blend of spirituality but practicality and so um yeah that's what i love about that is that's really the the direction that we're going in as um as a collective it's, it's important to acknowledge all of those different layers of it. And just, yeah, I feel like you guys are here to work again with people in person, but if you're not doing that, um, obviously honor, this is the age of Aquarius. So there's so many different ways to reach people. Um, but I feel like people get the most impact when they're in person with you, looking into your eyes, feeling your field, um, when it's a small group setting, um, like five, you know, like retreats even could be something that you want to do. The cave also reminds me of retreat type of energy, but like, or even like hosting workshops or something. Um, but w environments that leave people feeling like so seen and like, oh, it's okay. It's all going to be good. And just, it's like a breath of fresh air. Okay. So this was a beautiful to tune into. Thank you guys so much for giving me permission to read this. If you guys stayed this long, thank you so much. Uh, like this video if it resonates. Uh, comment anything down below that you, you feel guided to. And I do hope I see you on my channel again soon. Hey, group number three. Welcome to your reading for your natural gifts and talents and how to use them. So I'm going to hop right into this because I'm getting a pretty solid feeling about your guys' energy, man. Uh, you guys are journeyers, you guys are explorers, inner and outer. I feel like, you know, the first thing I heard when I flipped this over is I heard something about drum circles. So this could also just remind me of like shamanic practices or, you know, it's really important. I feel like what keeps you guys really sane, there's a lot here about like, there's a lot of mutable energy coming through this, okay? So you guys might have significant placements in Sagittarius, um, uh, Virgo, Gemini, or Pisces could be like really infused throughout your chart. Um, and those houses, you know, there's a lot here about, it's important for you guys to always be like journeying and exploring like inner journeys, journeys too. So like plant medicines with the, you know, the lady coming through and she's all about earth. Okay. Different plant medicines, but also there's a lot here about like not really being able to settle down 
okay? I feel like you guys are always moving. Uh, you guys don't stay stuck for long. If anything, you, got, you guys might reach burnout pretty easily or feel like you might get a sense of you don't really know where you're going, right? Because the lizard kind of has that shape-shifty kind of energy where, you know, I'm reminded of, uh, you know, it scales, like it, it changes colors. What is that? A chameleon, right? And the fish is just kind of known to go with the flow, you know? So I'm getting this sense that if anything, you guys might like, you guys might like, right, like be living <laughs> or have lived in a bus or a car. I am getting that kind of like very hippie free lifestyle from this group. Yeah, very unique, multifaceted, unique nature. I feel like um, one of your gifts truly is, and this might not feel like a gift all the time, just because I'm I'm sensing that if anything, you might feel a little bit unstable sometimes. Like you don't have like a firm root base or a firm home base or something to call your own, okay? You've been through challenges, all right? But I feel like ultimately like, you see the challenges and the obstacles as part of the path. And you don't necessarily wait until the path is completely forged and completely um, you know, clear before you take the first step. I think if anything, you guys might just be stepping and just think you just end up being caught, okay? And that's what is so beautiful about this group is I feel like it can make people like, it can almost create unease in other people just because you might be very radical in the way that you do it or very like, there's something here that just tells me that how you guys live your life is very unconventional, at least in some areas, if, if not many areas, it's very unconventional. And it, it's almost like when people are in your field and they hear about how you live your life, it makes them uncomfortable just because they're like, I could never live that way. Because where you source your sense of security from is much different than where other people do, okay? Or just like, you know, people that are super plugged into the matrix do. I feel like there's a lot here, like you travel well, you have a lot of great ideas. Um, it can even feel like you have multiple personalities, all right? I'm not diagnosing, but that's like what this mutable energy is, like having multiple selves and different, like so many facets. I mean, there's the scales that are coming through just shows me there's so many different facets and layers and levels to you that I, I feel like you're even getting to know. Uh, we have water energy and fire energy coming through. So there's a lot of like polarization here that I feel like is actually one of your biggest gifts. Um, and and maybe I am just getting the sense of, I need to tell you guys that it's everything's okay. Everything is gonna be okay. And this doesn't mean just because we're, we don't always feel like we're locked into our thing or that one thing, it doesn't mean something's inherently negative. I feel like, you just might have codes in your blueprint that keep you in this state and that if it's in your blueprint and if it's what feels natural and you're doing it, then you can be sure that you're honoring your destiny. You're honoring your dharma. You're honoring what you're here for. But I feel like things have always worked out for you. And that's one of your gifts to extend to the planet is like when people live in such radical ways that you're like, wow, that's people, maybe people think that's so different. It could even be something, you know, like take my situation, for example, where I am um, not with romantically involved with my daughter's father at all, but we're roommates and we're good friends. And he goes out on, you know, adventures and dates with other people. And so do I. And we just make it work because she is the most important thing to us. And we love our family and we love our dynamic altogether as friends and as like souls, just, you know, getting to share a unique part of life together that we won't probably with anyone else and honoring that. And then also like having our own separate seeming lives, you know, uh, and that could be very different and very radical depending on who you ask. And, you know, <laughs> when I share it, sometimes I, I don't even realize of how far out that is for other people. And, you know, so that's just like one area. And I feel like it, things that seem so normal to you just might be very far out for other people. And you don't, you don't, you probably don't recognize how, cur how much courage it takes to be so multifaceted. Oh yeah, it literally says multifaceted right here. To be so unique and so different. And maybe sometimes you might even judge yourself, pile number three, just because you might get weird looks or people just don't know how to act around it because it's so different. And that is your biggest gift is, is being different. And you know, my favorite phrase, my favorite saying from this, and if you've pulled this card before, let me know in the comments, cause this is my favorite saying, cause I, this recently came up in another group reading I did, but uh, the, you know, the flower doesn't open or close depending on who walks by. 
And so this is about unapologetically being yourself no matter what environment you're in. There's no comparison. It's like you can't compare the cherry blossom to the tulip. It's like different expressions, different destinies. Okay, and so when you fully honor your destiny and how unique and eccentric and changing it seems to always be, there's so much change I feel like you guys go through. Journeying, always journeying, dreaming, off to new adventures. I feel like to the extent that you guys do it is just like, so radical for other people because they just might have more fixed energy okay they just might have more um things that support in their blueprint to be somewhat stable and consistent right and i feel like you guys might have very many areas of your life that are so radically different in how you express yourself and that's a gift okay if i'm i feel such a i feel so guided to remind this group that it's a gift so maybe you guys forget that it is one or maybe it's because you know um, we are taught these things in our culture. We're conditioned to think that there's a timeline and that if our life doesn't look this way by this age, then somehow we're failing. Okay. But I feel like you guys, when you're really living in alignment with your freest expression in every moment is when you guys see the most growth from yourself. And when you see that you, you reap the most amount of rewards, you can't be tied down. That's more of that Sagittarius energy is like re rebellious. Like if you want to try to put me in a box, watch me bust the fuck out of it real quick. Okay. And, and like a rebel with a cause. And like, I'm here for, you know, to just be a wild expression of the divine. Um, and yeah, there's a lot here too about, um, completion. Cause we have 10 here. We have 10 here. Like with these two fives, we have 10. And then the universe is like the world card. Okay. The universe card here. And so it's all about completion, right? Tying off loose ends. Uh, so I do feel like maybe one of the reasons it's so radical is that, you know, this might be one of those incarnations where you're really pushing to the edge of exploring like taboo things, you know, and at, at a time in our culture where it's being more okay, like taboo is being more accepted. Um, or at the very least, like people don't stare at you too long. <laughs> you know what I mean? People don't raise their eyebrows too high. But I just feel like you're really pushing the envelope in terms of like, you're really pushing, pushing boundaries of like societal, societal norms in your expression. And that's really positive. I'm getting that's really positive. And yeah, you tend to feel conflicted within yourself and defeated when you, you start to buy into the narrative and when you're not paving your own path and when you're living, when you're like, all right, maybe I will try to be a normal, you know, nine to five or something. And I'm not knocking the nine to five because for some people that is a part of their destiny. Um, but for this group, if this, you know, I don't think you would still be here if you don't <laughs> just the amount of radicalness I'm getting from this group. You know, I don't think you guys would be ones with a nine to five, but I'm not saying that's like negative um, because some people it's in their greatest, highest dharma to be like to work as a public accountant, you know? or whatever, um, showing up at nine, leaving at five. Okay. But I feel like your guys is, is very much more by the seams. Okay. And seeming to be a lot less stable, but you guys know better because it seems like it's always worked out for you. Um, yeah, gosh, I have, thank God for those friends that I have that, you know, it's been kind of fun to watch the journey of those people that kind of live a life this radically because it's so cool of how just watching people where it's like, okay, you can, you feel almost their own flightiness of their own expression, but they don't know better. It's like they really, you can either enjoy it, right? Or you can kick and scream, but it's like part of your expression. And so just trust because I've seen, I've had, I like have real testimonies of seeing this, these kinds of codes to this degree of extreme, <laughs> like be so free and so beautiful. And I've seen on the sidelines things work out for this. You know, I have one person in mind that this is reminding me of, but I've seen it work out for her over and over and over again, no matter how unstable and how like fearful she's been. And I'm like, girl, like, don't you see it's all it's, you know, it's always worked out no matter how freaking insane your circumstances were. Like the check came in from a random place. We landed the housing situation when it was meant to like, so mutable, so traveling, always, you know, changing environments and all of that. But I feel grateful to see that 
and the success and, you know, just like how it's so cool. It's so cool. So I'm really, I'm getting the sense that you guys might feel very unstable and it's just because you're picking up more on the collective consciousness around living a life like this. It's not you, it's, it's the other people. Cause you're very, you're very sensitive. You're very in tune with the worlds of other people and how they perceive you. Um, and so when you feel that, you know, feel it, but know that that's not coming from you. That's mainly you are really the extreme, the extremity, like to the extreme that you are living this, right? Is like, you're really pushing up against, um, collective ideas of what stability really is. And you're showing my, your greatest stability is relying on the universe. Okay. <laughs> and you know, there's just as much instability living this kind of life van life, traveling in your car, whatever, traveling the States, always moving as there is, you know, um, a CEO who's been there for, um, 25 years, you know, there's just as much risk in both of those. I would say even, you know, even, I would say even more so if you don't want, if you don't align with a nine to five and you are staying in one, there's more risk there than this kind of life. Because at the end of it, at the end of this life, you can at least say that you journeyed, that you dreamed, that you took a bet on yourself. And this is what your greatest gifts and talents to extend to other people is you are helping people see that when you bet on yourself, the, nat the forces of nature conspire in your favor. That's Terrence McKenna, uh, which is interesting because, you know, he was one of the, he's one of the more well-known people within the psychedelic movement or what's that name, right? Um, you know, besides like Timothy Leary, like Aldous Huxley, that kind of thing. It's like, you know, the universe responds to courage. The forces of nature will bend to your will bend to support the person that um, is courageous and that bets on themselves. Okay, so I'm gonna see how else is this could apply, how you guys can utilize this in your life. Pile number three. So, um, how to use these gifts and talents for pile three? How do they use it? Okay, community. I just saw community with the ten of pentacles. Magician. Don't think you have to do, have to do it on your own. All right, life is a celebration. I'm going to get a couple more cards. Yeah, what I love about the magician in particular in this is like, this is like my ultimate card for resources. And so like the right thing showing up at the right time. Okay, but I feel like one of your gifts that you might not see or something that's happening right now is you're building a community, all right? Um, people to celebrate with and to, um, you know, this is like the ultimate card for celebration, the four of uh, wands. And so... I feel like you guys bring, like when you enter someone's life, like you are, I think this came up in all of the piles today, but this was a, a something that I was, I was on my run and I kept hearing something about blessings and le lessons, like, but I was saying it like blessings and lessons because I'm a poet at heart. And so I like to, I don't know, I think a poem is about to be born, but um, I was hearing something about blessings and lessons. And I was thinking about this lover that just, you know, went back to Florida after we had a really great magical time together. And uh, I was a little bit, <laughs> I was like, mm, when am I going to have a blessing that is also a lesson, but it's a blessing and it stays a blessing. I don't feel like I'm being robbed or, you know, uh, but I just, you know, I'm human too. Okay. I have my moments. And then that same lover, we haven't talked in like three days just because I just needed space from the dynamic to get my shit straight. And, uh, he actually sent me he broke the silence and sent me a Kevin Gates thing. He just sent me this random thing on Instagram that said, literally said, blessing and lesson, like in it, about making space for more blessings to come in. And he's like, and the blessing is in the lesson, okay? And I was like, what the fuck? It was so crazy. It was one of those things, okay? So all I'm here to say is like, I feel like when you guys come into people's lives, you are that. You bring a lot of uh, blessings and lessons into people's lives. And it's just from your you just how carefree you are, how free you are, what a free spirit you are and a rebel with a cause and someone that is not like, you can't tie this kind of person down. Okay. You're like the untethered soul. You were like the, um, you know, the, the books, the people that, you know, people will read about and be like, what the hell? Like that is like, could only wish that they could even get a glimmer of an experience of this you know? So yeah, I feel like you guys are in the process or wherever you go, you make family, wherever you go, you fit in, wherever you go. It's like you belong nowhere, but everywhere at the same time, right? Like, like the lizard, the chameleon, like can blend in anywhere. Um, but I, but you don't stay somewhere too long is really what I'm getting. And so, yeah, there's a lot here about being resourceful and trusting that things will have always worked out for you and they will continue to, to work out for you. 
Um, let, let me get a little bit more. I feel like there's another message that's wanting to be birthed through at this time. Yeah, maybe even some of you... Um, yeah, I'm hearing that you do show up that way as a lover as well. Okay, a lot of king, a lot of that masculine kind of energy too. Yeah, I'm getting strong Gemini and Sagittarius from this group for sure. Um, with these two cards and just... Um, I'll look at that at the bottom of the deck. So um, Pisces could also be a significant um, placement for you as well. More of that mutable energy. It's interesting here too, because you know these are all like the most mature aspects of each sign. Okay, so I, f I really am feeling like if anything, it's like, I feel like you kind of, how you bless other people and your natural gift and talent is that people get a certain idea of who you are based off of how you present yourself, how you carry yourself and just your expression. But then they are very surprised at like your emotional maturity. And, um, you know, there's more of that Gemini energy and that Virgoan energy coming through. Like you communicate yourself like that Mercurian energy is what I'm trying to say. Like the way you can express yourself is, is very impressive. And, you just seem like someone that really knows where they're going, regardless of how like much it changes. And I think I know that's one of the gifts that you bring to other people is you you give people permission to try and to not and to be okay with like you know this the Two of Pentacles is all about like when something is not getting enough attention. Um, but at least there's you know the thing about this is at least there's like an attempt to try other things and to see if something else can work better, right? The thing about mutable energy is it's highly um, adaptable. And so this type of energy does the best with, uh, like you would thrive in chaos or you would thrive when shit's hitting the fan. Like you guys thrive in the tower moments. You guys thrive, what is that? What am I trying to say? Uh, you thrive in adver adversity, okay? It's like literally what, <laughs> like it is just built within you to really just shine the most in those moments. And so, if anything, I wouldn't be surprised if at s somehow you're communicating this in the world, but I feel like just within beyond just like, how do I monetize my gift? How do I like make money off of this? I really feel like your gifts far supersede just that. And I'm sorry that I can't bring forward more at this moment in time about, about what that is. Um, but I, I honestly feel like as long as you guys are aligning with your heart and like being you like staying true to your multifaceted, mutable, changing, always evolving energy, then it's just going to make sense. But the reason I don't, I feel like I can't pinpoint the one thing is because it changes a lot because you change a lot. And so you might've changed careers a lot, lovers a lot, you know, situations, um, living situations, states, like always on the move, right? Always ending new cycles and beginning anew. But I feel like if anything, you like help people break out of their own, own boxes and their own preconceived notions of how life can work and how it can be fulfilling. And you can feel very stable, even when you don't meet that traditional sense of what it means to, you know, be a stable individual. Okay. Or like have stable living environments. Like, what does that mean? Like, it just always works out for you and it always will. And no matter how fear, much fear there might exist in the meantime, I feel like you'll get to a point to where like you just, you just know, you don't always know how, but that's with this magician energy. That's like the ultimate manifester is, uh, you know, the master metaphysicians, like they didn't need to, they didn't need the proof, right? It's like, they just knew because they had taken that chance so many times and it's always worked out that you, they just knew. And so it came quicker. And so I feel like that's the path that you're on. And you're really a teacher of these things, of what it means to li like be the creator of your reality and be the ultimate manifester of your life and not settling to a system, to a box, working for other people. I think if anything, you're like, I'll work with you, but you know, like other people that are um, very creative as well and that are here for, you know, not to, they don't like boxes either. And so, but I feel like you guys are great networkers and meet a lot of people where you go and you kind of fit in everywhere and you inspire a lot of people just by being who you are. And that is such a gift, all right? It's not about how do I make money, okay? But like, 
I feel like just you being you, you're going to attract those opportunities to do that. And it's going to be fun and it's not going to feel like, like it's going to be changing. I think you guys need, you, you guys can't get stuck somewhere very long or you get bored. And so I feel like if anything, it would be something that, um, complements this like changing nature to you as well. And to where you are just like really pushing those boundaries, man. And it's really inspiring. Like I'm excited. Like I, I want to go take a trip somewhere now <laughs> because just like from tuning into your energy, but yeah. Um, you know, I did feel that energy at the beginning of needing to reassure you of your path. And so you know, you're on the right path. Okay. Like this is, this is what it's, this is part of your expression, part of your blueprint. Um, and if you could be doing something else, trust that you would be, um, and that maybe you could just surrender to your destiny and know this is kind of how it's supposed to be. Okay. So pile number three, I'm going to leave this reading here for now. This brought clarity, confirmation, peace to your heart. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any mutable signs in your chart in significant places or what your sun sign is. Uh, cause I always like to see, um, you know, the confirmations of that, but yeah, I hope to see you guys on my channel again soon. Much love. Hey, group number four, welcome to your reading. If you chose the white witch, this is for you today, man. Okay. So couldn't help but notice that your animal cards, you had both the cheetah and the lion, which if you ask me, these are like, you know, if we had two competitors for like the feline spotlight of the fire element, these would be it. Okay. Uh, interesting too, that I noticed that they were kind of looking at each other. They were facing inward. So, you know, the fire element is all about uh, transformation. So I feel like there's a lot of introspection that you guys have done. Like you really look within yourself to figure out where you're going to figure out what to do with your life. And I feel like one of that is honestly one of your greatest gifts and one of your greatest talents is transformation. It's interesting that in this deck in particular, like the, the sun element uh, resonates more with the cheetah card than it does Leo or I'm sorry, the lion. Uh, like in traditional tarot, uh, you know, usually the strength card or the, you know, Leo is um, associated with the sun or the sun card and the strength card is like the lion, okay? Is what I'm trying to spit out, all right? But I feel like, um, you know, your guys's ability to transform we have the ultimate the ultimate card for transformation the ultimate symbol for personal self-development transformation here and you know it says that the sun doesn't shine upon the cheetah it shines from within and this is all about never giving up there's so much tenacity that comes with this pile i feel like yeah and we have ignite your passions and we have be the light and we have the hope card like one of your greatest gifts is you guys are truly inspiring to be around. Uh, I'm getting the sense that you are very charismatic. People love to be around you, okay? Like, people cannot get enough of your energy. I feel like when you guys do let loose and go out and have fun, I feel like you guys are the life of the party. Um, and you guys are someone that naturally draws attention to you. I feel like with a, you know, this accelerated motion, I feel like you're always on the move. Uh, you're always glowing up. You're always doing something you're like different. Uh, at the very least, I feel like, um, you guys don't stay somewhere like in one place very long. Um, in some sense, it, it's, it feels like an, an accumulation or like a culmination of all of the piles that have come before this. Like, I feel like, um, there's a lot here, like with the star bathing and the crystal grid in particular, and then the ley lines, like there's a lot here about going to sacred places on the planet. So that might be something that you guys are guided to do or something you, you already do. Like you go to visit the pyramids or you want to do that. I would hear, I'm hearing if that's something that you've been interested in, that would be beneficial to do that. Um, but like going to, what is it like the Stonehenge or, you know, um, Mount Shasta, where, regardless of where you are, I feel like naturally there's a lot of sacred codes that are to be experienced and activated when you go to those places. Um, if anything, I feel like there could be something here too about, you know, in terms of how to utilize your natural gifts and talents. It's like hosting retreats there or workshops there, or, um, you know, there's a lot here about you guys have introspected so much you know, there's a lot of looking in, okay? These two people are looking in and, you know, these two felines are looking in. So I feel like you guys are here to also help people like look within to find their own light, all right? There's also a lot here too about not putting up with petty bullshit. So I feel like one of your gifts is like, if people are like talking about, like talking shit about other people, like I feel like your energy, if not your words would squash that really quick 
because you're like, I'm here for something bigger, okay? I'm not here to like gossip. I'm not here for pettiness. Like, you know, if anything, I feel like because you guys are so self-aware, you can recognize yourself in all beings, right? You recognize, um, you know, it's like that, that saying, I think it's in the Bible of like, you know, don't point out the splinter in someone else's eye when you have a log in your own kind of thing. So there's a lot of introspection here. And I feel like that is one of your gifts and why you move so quickly, why you grow through situations so quickly. Like the thing about the fire element, I love talking about the fire element because maybe you guys even have like a lot of fire in your chart. You guys might resonate with like being Pitta people. If you have studied Ayurveda, there's three like dosha. So there's, um, you know, th there's different elements that make up all of us. All right. Uh, that make up everything in this physical universe is made up of, you know, the uh, five elements, earth, air, ether, water, fire. Okay. And some people, the Pitta people are people that are primarily fire. And there's like a little bit of water, which gives us, you know, oily skin problems. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, all of that to say that Pitta people are natural teachers. Okay. What is the, what does fire do? It's associated with the digestive system. So, the digestion, the digestive system is all about you take things in, you take in experiences, you take in knowledge, you take in everything you're learning from, right? You take it in and you digest it. What does that mean? You're extracting the goodness from it. It doesn't get backed up. It doesn't remain like unintegrated in your field. So, you know, if you had been through like childhood problems or whatever, this would be a group that you're like, okay, how do I take this shit and make it into fertilizer? Like, how was this meant to shape me? What, what was this here to teach me? That's the fire element. It's all about digesting and utilizing, like being able to actually absorb the goodness out of what we're taking in and what we're experiencing. And so I feel like that is what you do. And that's what you help other people do as well. Uh, there is a lot here about following your passion and following your heart, following your bliss. So I feel like that's something that you guys do. You give people hope that, you know, when it, you give people hope that when it comes to making decisions, that if I really do follow what lights me up, my passions, and I follow my heart, what allows the most amount of love into my experience, then I'm going to be good. I'm going to be taken care of. I can trust that. Excuse me. You guys might be like life coaches too or something with the movement choices, decisions. Like you help people make decisions or you give them the courage to make the decisions that they deep down know they should, like not playing it safe, but actually going for what it is that they really want to go for. Um, there is also something here to be said about like burning through shame. Okay. Because some of the things that you guys are passionate about might be a little bit like taboo or just like not fully accepted by the mainstream or fully understood by many people. And I feel like the thing about someone like you, pal number four, is that you're very perceptive. That's something else about the fire element. Okay. They're extremely like nothing gets by them. Okay. They're very perceptive. And I feel like if anything, it's like people can have an idea of you based off of you saying like, this is what I do in life. Like if you did something that's maybe up my alley or something like, Oh, if you're telling like a lawyer that you read tarot cards for a living or whatever, you can kind of get a sense, you know, of how they might respond to that. Cause it's so beyond normal. And it's so outside of like that logical muscle that builds up a lawyer. Right. And I'm not saying no, I'm or saying lawyers lack intuition because I'm sure that's a big part of what makes a successful lawyer. Okay. But honestly, just for the sake of the analogy, I feel like people are generally very surprised at, um, like you might have been shameful about what feels natural to you. Like even some of you guys, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like body art here too. So like things that don't seem to go together very well, or like, you know, how can I be a super successful professional and have like sleeve tattoos, that kind of thing. And so there's a lot here about you can be it all. Like you can be professional. You can be you can, it's like joining forces or like melding things that don't seem to go together. And I feel like it's because you seem to be able to go well in many different environments. Uh, like it, do it doesn't matter what type of person you're talking to. I feel like you just really bring out the humanity in other people and you're very lighthearted, but you're also very deep. Okay. And you are able to naturally bring like a very holistic perspective or like philosophical perspective or spiritual perspective into whatever it is that you're doing, uh, whoever you're around, whoever you're with. And I feel like people just like being around you. And honestly, you know, they actually say that 
what makes people the most successful, like the most su successful CEOs. I was in, I, you know, have my bachelor's in business. So this is, was something that was really interesting to me is that 15% of what makes the most successful CEO is 15% is actually skills. Did you know that pile number four? You probably did because I feel like you guys would be a group that would see that if you have enough charisma and you have like a decent amount of people skills, like the world is your oyster. All right. And so all of that to say, it's like 85% of what makes the most successful person is someone that knows other people. And you guys might have even read things like uh, how to win friends and influence people, you know, that kind of thing. But I feel like this, um, if anything, this already comes very natural to you. Like you could write a book like that, right? Because all it comes down to is like actually listening to other people. Okay. Not cutting people off. Um, you know, when they're talking to you, like genuinely being interested in other people, like this is not something you have to fake it to make it. It's like, this is naturally who you are. I feel like the human experience really enthralls you. I am feeling a lot of Sagittarius energy or, or like ninth house energy, even like scorpion energy or like Scorpio energy is what I might, what I mean by that. Uh, eighth house placements too. Um, because it's, it's like, you really understand, um, that regardless of how things look on the outside, that at the core of us, we're all wanting the same thing and we're all going through the same thing. And so I feel like that is one of your really great gifts as you're very charismatic. You're a people's person. You might not think you're charismatic, but you know, I meet people that are really like, um, the most, some of the most charismatic people that I've been meeting recently, it's not because they're like, they're super uptight, like they're not tight assed. You know, it's like the more, the, I think someone is charismatic. Like I would call them more charismatic, the more comfortable they are in their own skin. And generally what comes along with that is a playfulness and a lightheartedness. And no matter who you're talking to, whether it's like a super, super business person or like a hippie on the beach living in their van, like people are drawn to that. People like, like hum, human, the human spirit craves that people that are relaxed in who they are and that are like give you permission to be relaxed in who you are, okay? And so it's like you have really mastered this fire element of like uh, you're perceptive, you're all about transformation, but it's like you're, mm, I was gonna say you're not intimidating once people get to know you because I think externally you guys could be very like beautiful externally, very attractive externally, um, you know, very, uh, athletic is also a pitta quality, very athletic looking, or just like, um, very attractive and however you look very attractive. Okay. And I feel like you, you can surprise people is what I'm getting, but one of your gifts and your, you know, can you even call it a talent? One of your gifts is you disarm people and you help people recognize, Hey, look, I'm just a human too. And I feel like maybe because of what it is you do or how it is that you look or like the status that might come along with your name or something. Uh, and then people actually getting to know you actually gives people a lot of hope and inspiration of like, Oh my God, like that person was so cool. And like, maybe I, maybe I am cool. <laughs> maybe I could be cool. And again, what does that mean? It's just like, okay to be yourself, right? Cool. In my book is just like free to be yourself, not putting on a show. And so I feel like one of your gifts, you're very gifted at making shit happen. Um, I am getting the sense too, with like this Leo energy coming through, like some fixed energy of like, you know, we have that Aries coming through of like being able to start something. We have the Leo's energy coming through of like sustaining it and like not giving up. There's a lot of perseverance here with it, within both of these, like, um, you know, having stamina for the long term, And then we also have that Sagittarius which, you know, evolves through changing and always learning and traveling and meeting new people. Okay. Because yeah, there's a lot here about always being on the move, moving really fast. Uh, but you don't, you leave in a way, like, although you're moving quickly, you don't leave people feeling like you leave filling people's cups because you've actually seen them and they feel like no matter what they have been through, uh, cause you guys have probably been through some shit too, with just how much you know, evident codes of transformation are in your chart. If you have this much fire existing within your chart, or, you know, even if it's not in your chart, just this is part of your personality to be this way, be very fiery and, you know, always learning, assimilating, digesting. Um, it's safe to say you have had good practice. Okay. Taking some bullshit and making it into something beautiful. And that is a gift within itself. That is, you know, one of the greatest gifts we can give 
um, we can bring to the planet, all right? So we're gonna get deeper. How does this look for pile four? Dedicated, more of that dedicated energy, yep. Slow and steady. So not expecting overnight, um, overnight results for whatever it is you're doing. Like we have the two cheetahs looking directly at each other. So, I mean, you are unstoppable, pile number four, with whatever it is that you decide to do. I am hearing though, for you, it's much more about the person that you are. And like, it's a lot less about the thing that you're doing. It's like who you are and how you inspire other people, how you bring them hope. Um, there is a lot here about uh, like self-sustainment though, with the you know the two sixes coming through and like starting something and watching it build over a period of time. There is more here. They're coming through about community and soul family, working with soul family. So uh, you guys might be guided to do workshops or to travel the world. That was you know I think I said that right when I I hope I did with um like going to these sacred sites and hosting retreats or something, or being guided there. Even just like you know when you're traveling around like hosting up hey meetups or something like that like i'm over here today but there's a lot of dedication there's a lot of hard work um that comes through there's a lot of humility regardless of like um that can be the misconception of like leo energy or just like all of this fire energy is like leos are known to have like very courageous hearts and very like showboaty almost but they can be the most humble people you'll ever meet okay and so I feel like there again, there's more of that misperceiving and showing people like proving people wrong in a good way of like, not because you're trying to, but because I feel like people have box like, you know, conditioning just makes us box people in and box ourselves in and box in ideas of how things should be. And like, if this, then this, and that's not, you know, life is not an equation in that sense. I do believe there's order underlying order to all of the chaos but i i do feel like you break a lot of boxes and break a lot of paradigms in terms of just what people expect and then the depth and hope and inspiration that they actually get it's like they're like whoa i like i don't know like i took this person i was not expecting that but in a, in a really good way but yeah a lot about um community building right yeah self-sustainment yeah there's so much here coming you know starting from the bottom now you're here kind of thing a lot of people that want to be around you yeah you have great ideas very tuned in i could keep going um very very self-sustained and i feel like in terms of how it looks there is there is a lot here to be said about doing your own thing the fire element is like and you know in my experience it's like the the king of wands kind of energy is like very entrepreneurial the fire element is all about creativity and um you know, utilizing that passionate energy to guide our lives. And there is also here a lot too about the heart, emotional intelligence. And so it's like, you guys aren't going to be putting your name behind something that you don't actually believe in. So in terms of how to utilize your gifts, it's what sets you on fire, what is helping you and other people continually expand, um, showing people that everything, anything is possible. And that as long as you're consistent, you don't need to like convince yourself to do something that you actually like to do. You're going to be consistent and eventually that consistency pays off. But I feel like there is a lot, a lot to be said with the lovers and the two of cups energy and the three of cups. You're working with other people. Uh, you work well in person. All right. Um, and you are very tuned in to divine ideals and you're here to be the light. All right. No matter where you go, you are the light and you're building communities. You're like very self-sustained, but, and I shouldn't say, but you're, you're very, self-sourced in terms of your emotionality and like feeling good about yourself and knowing your place in this world and you're getting to a point if you're not already there you'll get to a point eventually where it just it only makes sense to share it with other people you're like i can't do this shit alone anymore like i'm here to work with other people that's where you start to feel the most fulfilled and maybe in the past it was just like an imposter syndrome kind of thing or right now it might be an imposter syndrome kind of thing um but you'll get to a point where it's like you have no choice like you're I don't know, with, with these codes, it's like you have BDE, okay? You have big destiny energy and it's like, you're gonna break through at some point. But I do feel that there's a lot of like self-empowerment here. There's so much about being self-made. That doesn't mean that we don't have help along the way and people don't believe in us, et cetera. Like that is all so necessary on 
this type of path, but I feel like that is a given because your guys' heart is in the right place and people can feel that. People can feel your um, genuine nature and that you want to see other people win. You want to help other people win. And so it's like when you're providing your ear and your heart and your wisdom to other people, it's not because you think you know better, but it's because you're like, hey, like, let's be free together, you know? Like, I can do this shit on my own, but like, let's, wouldn't it be fun if we could all be free together and we're all just like filling each other's cups because our cups are already filled? But like, yeah, I am seeing a lot about community, you guys, and a lot about traveling and following your intuition. And uh, yeah, like honestly, the better it gets, the better it gets. And I think you guys, I can feel that you guys are so much fun to be around. People fall in love with you, your heart. I'm not just talking romantically, but that too. But you're just really fun to be around. And uh, you're incredible. You're like you're the everything. You're just like triple threat. I don't know, quadruple threat, all threat, like seeming. And then people get to know you and you're just like, cool as fuck okay like just i want to chill with this with this group but there's a lot of magic you're working with and it's yeah i feel like you're you are so confident more and more you're becoming so confident and so relaxed into your own power like this is the ultimate card of like peace and power right look at that like peace and power relax relaxing into it's because when you when you're aligned to something greater than yourself you know you got it going on okay and um, you're, you follow those divine ideas and you see them through and you see how it's always worked out. And so you become much more trusting and your faith, you know, there's, they say there's four levels of faith. The first form of faith is very shaky and you need to rely a lot on like omens and like teachers, et cetera, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of the journey. But then it's like you get to a point throughout incarnations um, and you could even have that microcosm happen in one incarnation. But this happens, I'm sure you, we deepen our levels of faith throughout a multitude of lifetimes to where you're, you're residing within that fourth level where it's like, you just know there's no other way to operate. And I'd like to try to tell, to have someone tell me that, you know, I should be insecure in any area because you're taking your cues from something that makes up everything. You're taking your, your cues from the source of all things and not from, you know, the manifestation you're going to the source, not the manifestation, you know? So this, these are beautiful energies. I mean, I feel like you'd be successful as long as you're following your passions and it's about self-transformation and you're constantly moving and you're expressing yourself and you're learning and you're with other people while you're doing it, you're gonna win. And there's a lot of prosperity. There's a hell of a lot of prosperity that's coming. You'll, like, you'll be set financially, but you know you're winning pile four when you like feel a type of way. And when you're just like, you're overflowing with gratitude because like more and more your days are full of laughter and true connection with other humans and you're just in love with life. And I could soak in this energy. This is so beautiful. You guys are so beautiful. But thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for offering your gifts and talents to the world at this time, especially these codes are so powerful. Keep going where you're guided. You have all that you need. If this resonated, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment anything down below. Maybe give me a, a fire emoji down below if you feel guided to, and I do hope to see you on my channel again soon.